Hey, I have so much to say in so little time. I'm going to try and do this like really speedy, like a TikTok uh, movie, a little TikTok video. Um, okay, so first of all, it's awesome weather here in Yerushalayim. It's nice and cold. I kind of feel like every year it's always really hot and muggy and dusty. And there's like this dirt in the air and it's almost like Hashem is laughing at us and making fun of us, cleaning for Pesach. And he's like saying, dirt is not chametz. Don't you love those people? So it's like Hashem is doing that. And we're like, we know dirt is not chametz, but we would prefer to not have dirt on our cars right after we clean them all up for Pesach. So hello. Anyway, it seems like Hashem is sending us wonderful weather this year. And um, so here we are. If you want to hear more about Pesach, I did do an hour long Zoom class for my trip who came in February. Um, and if you'd like a copy of it and you didn't get it yet, I'm happy to send you the link to the recording. Um, okay, so I want to talk today about Shabbat Haggadol. Did you know this Shabbat is called Shabbat Haggadol, which literally means the big Shabbos? Now, obviously, Shabbos is not big in size. So what does big mean or the great Shabbos? So Nativot Shalom has a few points about this that I would like to bring uh give over, but also to remind you that on Shabbat, every single Shabbat, really, we have the energy that comes down like the life force for the week that comes after that Shabbat, meaning the Shabbat that precedes the week gives the life force and the energy and the potential for that week, okay? So really, every week, we're living on the life force of the Shabbat that precedes it. So what happens before a Chag is that you have um, you have the energy already that is coming down on Shabbat is the energy of the Chag that comes in that week. So there's actually two Shabbats that are associated with like a name, like there's a name for that Shabbat. The Shabbat that comes before Yom Kippur is called Shabbat Shuva, the Shabbat of repentance. And the Shabbat that comes before Pesach is called Shabbat Hagadol. So the question is, why does it... Uh, why is it called Gadol, the great Shabbat? So Nitivot Shalom talks about it. And he says, first of all, every Shabbat is really called Gadol. Because Gadol, in terms of uh, referencing Hashem, when it talks about like describing Hashem, when it's we say in our prayers, Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora, the God who is great and strong and awesome, so what, what does great mean? It refers to the character trait of chesed. So to speak that Hashem has this chesed element to him that, um, of course, we all have as well within us because we are, we are trying to emulate that chesed of God, that giving, that kindness, that uh, love. Okay, all those words are associated with the word gadol. Um, as opposed to, let's say, gibor, strong, is referring to God's um, attribute of justice. And the, the nora, awesome, is referring to God's, perhaps, I'm not sure, it could be I'm making this up, like the combination between the giving and the judgment, or the strength and the chesed. Okay, so um, the combination between them creates this awesomeness because like, what, how could that be that it could be both together? You know, it's usually opposites. Anyway, um, with referring to this Shabbat, why do we call it Shabbat HaGadol? Shabbat in general is a day where if you talk about the, the relationship that we have with Hashem, it's all about love. We have the idea that ki othi beni uvein bnei Yisrael. This is a sign. Shabbat is a sign between us and Hashem, between God and the Jewish people. It's almost like a covenant. It's almost like um, a marriage between Hashem and the Jewish people. So it's always called uh, great or good or big or loving, right? But on this Shabbat especially, we are preceding the holiday of Pesach, which as we said in our class, if you'd like to get more into, but you'll you'll realize that right away, this the energy of love is extremely prominent, prevalent, present on uh, Pesach. Pesach is a holiday of love. So it's when Hashem 
like unconditionally came in and swept us up and took us and chose us to be his people, to be his beloved, to be his firstborn son. B'ni B'chori Israel. Hashem says to Moshe to tell Paro right before the Jewish people get out of Egypt. He says, go tell Paro that my firstborn son is Israel. It doesn't matter what they do. They're my child, you know, so I'm always, always going to love them. And that's really the basis for our loving relationship. So Pesach is all about love. So the Shabbat preceding it brings down all this energy of unconditional love into the world, into the relationship that we have with Hashem, into the relationship that we have of ourself, for ourselves. And so it's called Haggadot, as opposed to, let's say, Shabbat Shuvah, the Shabbat that comes before Yom Kippur, is really more about fear, right? Or it's about judgment, or it's about strength, Gvura. Because it's, um, we're nervous about the judgment that we're going to have and we're trying to atone for our sins. And really the best possible way to atone for your sins is if you're kind of fearful of the consequences, right? So, so Shabbat Shuvah is more associated with judgment or fear. And Shabbat Hagadol is more associated with chesed and with love. Um, okay, so that's number one. Number two the also the essence of Pesach and connection to Shabbat as well is that God is kind of doing everything from above. Meaning normally when we have a relationship with Hashem, let's say on all the different holidays, we put in a lot of effort, like we prepare for the holiday, we try and come closer to God, and then we bring Hashem into our world by based on the amount of effort that we put into it. So like on Sukkot, we bring Hashem into our sukkah, right? So we put in the effort, and that's really how always it should be, that there's this um, reflective, uh, like kind of like a reflection of how much we put in, that's how much Hashem comes down and connects to us. But on Shabbat, first of all, every single Shabbat, no matter what, it's as if Hashem elevates us and brings us to His house. It's not the other way around. It's not like we put in the effort and then Hashem comes down. It's that it's that it's really dependent on Hashem. Hashem puts in the effort. Hashem comes towards us. It's Shabbat HaMalka. I'm coming to visit no matter what. And I'm really bringing you in to my home. I'm elevating you, okay, says Hashem to the Jewish people. So when we talk about Pesach, we also have that idea when we were redeemed from Mitzrayim, Hashem overwhelmed us, even though we were completely non-deserving. We weren't in a place. We had the slave mentality. We were slaves. We ha we were so stuck that we had nothing that really we could really put in because we, we didn't feel like human beings. We were so stuck in that slave mentality in Mitzrayim, which if you see the root of it is Meitzar, narrowness, constrictedness, limitation that we just, we couldn't put in any effort. It was enough that we even believed that there is a God and that God was going to save us. We believed in ourselves enough to even just like pick up our feet and go out of Egypt. That was as much as we could handle. So Hashem overwhelmed us and came down and did everything from above. It's called in Kabbalah, it's called It Aruta de la Eila. There was an awakening from above. So if you have the combination of Shabbat, which anyway is an awakening from above as opposed to awakening from below, us putting in the effort and then God reflecting that. So here we have a double whammy of Shabbat and Pesach. And that's also interestingly enough, you'll see as you go along in the in the calendar, right after Pesach, we have something called Svirat Omer. So from the we count the Omer from the day after the first day of Pesach. We start counting 49 days till we receive the Torah. And in the Torah, this is called, It says, start counting the day after Shabbat. But it's not the day after Shabbat. It's the day after Pesach. So you see there's a connection that really Pesach is called Shabbat because it has that association with God putting everything in and we're just responding to that love that Hashem shows us, you know, and we're kind of like the beloved. We, we are being swept off our feet and that is what we need to respond to. So the way that we need to respond to it and with this I will, I will end is that we need to feel that energy of complete 
um, surrendering to the fact that Hashem loves us unconditionally. And we need to believe that, that we are getting out of the constrictions and restrictions and narrowness and stuckness. Somebody just recently sent me an email and said, like, I feel like really stuck. Yeah, well, we all feel stuck. That is the human condition because we are finite. We are limited. But we need to realize that there are infinite possibilities because Hashem is running the world. Hashem is running the show. And Hashem is infinite. So there's so many options. You know, I was just I just heard the other day that somebody said that um, there was like a study that showed or that some some doctors were pointing at the fact in a study that there has never been a disease in the history of mankind that is 100 percent fatal. Every disease, there is one person at least or, or a few people or, or a percentage who have been cured from that disease, except for life, just by the way. Everyone, no matter what, does not get out of life alive, okay? Life is a fatal condition. Nobody is going to leave this world alive. So um, aside for that, though, every disease, every illness, theoretically, there, have been a, there has been an option to be cured from that disease, okay? So that's a really encouraging thought. So what that means is, what we need to realize is Hashem is overwhelming us with infinite possibilities, with openness, with redemption. So get out of your stuckness. Just realize that life is awesome and there's so many possibilities to grow and to be happy and to have this expanded consciousness and that anything is possible especially on the night of the Seder. But the energy comes down already on this Shabbat. So be prepared to be overwhelmed with the amount of possibilities for expansion, for for just like goodness, for Hashem showing us His love. But we need to be receivers. We need to believe it. Do you hear that? And it's not easy. We need to believe that Hashem can do anything and that he wants to do only good for us. So actually just today I was in the gym and um, my, my, uh, in, my uh, fitness guru, instructor, uh, Miriam Gross at MG Studios, shout out to Miriam Gross, said to me, you know, you know I'm giving you some homework because I see that your hands are always or often like kind of clenched, you know, And so I'm giving you some homework. Just open up your hands. Open them up. Just keep them out open. And I just thought, you know what? That's such a beautiful idea for Pesach because we are going from constriction, from clenched, from stressed out, from stuck into openness, into redemption. So so if you are feeling stuck, okay, along with all this emunah, that anything can happen and things can turn around and Hashem loves us and everything is good, open your hands. Just open your hands and say, I'm going from a limited view to an expanded view, that anything is possible, that Hashem loves me, that redemption can come from any stuck situation. And it's going to be okay because Hashem loves us. So just throughout the day, unclench your hands. Just remember, if they're clenched, they're probably stressed. They're probably trying to hold on to control. No, let go, let go. Everything's good, all right? So that's the thought to keep in mind and let's work on it on Shabbat. And um, just like we're, we're moving, we're moving from constrictedness and narrowness to just anything's possible, openness, expanded consciousness, and keep saying to yourself, I'm going to an expanded consciousness mode. Okay, have a good job.